What do you know about a man called Scaramanga? Scaramanga? The man with the golden gun. He always uses a golden bullet. Current price, one million dollars a hit. Who would pay a million dollars to have me killed? He counts on his reputation to terrify his intended victim. The man's a menace, he knows something. Like every great artist, I want to create an indisputable masterpiece once in my lifetime. A death at 007. If I found him first, sir, that might change the situation. Dramatically. He may even use one of those little golden bullets on you. Bonjour, Monsieur Bond. Mr. Bond, I am so delighted to see you again. I want him dead. Ah! I've lost my charm! Not from where I'm standing. dreamed about you setting me free. There are very few people who haven't heard of Bond. He's good, even by my standards. Don't kill me! Who? Oh! Go, man, go. No, please don't do anything. No, he won't be leaving. My golden gun against your wolf at PPK. Each of us with a 50-50 chance. Are you ready, Monsieur Scaramanga? Ready. Are you ready, Monsieur Bond? Ready. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bond. James Bond with your host, Mike Kalinowski, and myself, Brad Gilmore, promoting our brand new book, Bond, James Bond, exploring the shaken and stirred history of Ian Fleming's 007. This will be a limited podcast series that will dive into every single James Bond movie, and we will break them down. We will give our opinions, our hot takes, or whatever comes across our mind in the world of MI6's greatest secret agent, James Bond 007. We hope that you enjoy the podcast. So much so that you go to bondjamesbondbook.com and order our brand new book available on bondjamesbondbook.com or wherever books are sold. Let's enjoy the podcast. Everybody, welcome back to Bond, James Bond. We're exploring the shake and stir history of Ian Fleming's 007. My name is Brad Gilmore, joined by Mike Kalinowski. Mike, how you yes, doing? Yes, sir. I'm doing fantastic. How are you today? I'm well, man. I know you're excited because we're in the Moore era, um, yes, sir. which means we're yes, closer sir. to the Dalton era, which means we're closer to the Brosnan, or, and then Craig. We're almost there. We're almost there. This is the man with the golden gun. This is the ninth James Bond film, if my math is correct, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine. Right? I'll trust you on that one. I'm gonna go with my gut on it. Yeah, you know what's interesting did, is he did I five. Can, yeah, you had five Connery, was, then On Her Majesty's, then then because he did six total. Yeah, so then the seventh Connery or the seventh movie was Connery. Yeah, eight, nine. Yeah, this is nine. Yep. It's weird. Is I used to be able to name all the Bond movies uh, in order with dates. No problem, right? But for some reason, the uh, more ones always confuse me when I get to that back half really? of like where they are. Like, what came before this one? Was Moonraker this, before Octopussy, or was it after? This period, his first three throw me off. Mm-hmm. Once we hit 
Moonraker the, every two years. It's easy to go. Mm-hmm. But these for like, was it 74 is this one? Yes. 73. But for some reason, I always thought it was 73, 75, 77, 79. Mm. It's this one that goes like one year that throw, always throws me off. So this is the man with the golden gun. This is the follow up to live and let die. Yes, sir. Um, this is one that, again, when we talk about uh, when we talk about Bond titles, mm-hmm. one of the great Bond titles. Oh, if yeah. it has gold in there, we know it's going to be a classic for one reason or another. Uh, whether it's Golden Eye, Gold Finger, or the Man with the Golden Gun, um, great villain, great, oh, yeah. a lot of great. Except every yeah, I don't know if the movie is the best. Okay, so let's get let's get this off our chest, my chest right now. Like I was always kind of like indifferent to this film growing up, but when I did my rewatch, like say maybe two years ago, and uh, in, in kind of building up to this book, I realized like, oh, I really like this film. The okay. concept, like mm-hmm. I would love to see this. Well, I don't want to say, I don't want them to ever remake old James Bond films, Me but neither. this is one I think that could be remade because the concept of the assassin where he takes his identity and he gets his special made bullets. Like there's so much good stuff in here. Like that when I always would watch it as a kid and I, I know we always kind of say that, but like I was never into it. Like it wasn't as flashy to me. Like I liked more, I grew up with more of the flashy era of more. So this was more kind of this though, to me reminds me. And now I think about it. Of like Moore's from Russia with Love, like this old school, smaller scale. I know they still got like the space laser and his base and stuff, but like this whole thing when he and then I I don't remember why I didn't remember it as a kid, but like he goes to China, doesn't he? Like there's yeah. a whole scene where he, where he, he, I want to say he's Chinese, not Japan. I think it's China, and I'm like and they, they're watching like the this or was it Japan? Because it's sumo, sumo, yeah. They're watching so sumo, Japan. So it's Japan, Japanese, but like that whole thing was great. It was like real kind of old school spy stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we, you know, Bond impersonating him and stuff. And, you know, as a kid, I just think of like, oh, the third nipple. That's weird. Yeah. You know, but now you see the kind of, you know, you're, you you go behind the curtain and see how the sausage is made. And uh, like, I really like it. I really like this film. I mean, it towards the end, but then again, like his whole layer with the, like, like, like the hangman's alley, the, it was a gunman's alley. That's what that's kind yeah. of called. With the you know the carnival kind of game, yeah, they're testing each other. These two great assassins, like think about that in terms of 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 Bond and storytelling. When you take the two greatest assassins in the world against each other, like that's really good stuff. And and, and maybe I could see where this was probably a better book than it is a movie, because as a book, I think this would you know it just plays so well as a book. Uh, movie, maybe the translation, you know, they do bigger and better than and, than previous films, so. But I, I kind of liken it to Moore's From Russia With Love. I, I think that's, to me, you know, everyone could disagree with me on that. It feels like that to me. Well, I will say, look, like, it, okay, when we look at what this movie has and does well, let's look at that first. Okay. Roger Moore's grown as Bond. I think he's really good in this movie. He kind of comes Bond. into his own. In it. Yeah. yeah. Scaramanga, Christopher Lee. Classic. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. A great, uh, great name. I love the weird quirk of the third nipple. Although we're going to, yeah. I, I got to talk about the third nipple. Let me write a note to you bring have a third that nipple. Back. Is that what you're, you're I don't have a third nipple, but okay. I have a point about the third nipple. I want to make Nick knack. Right. Hervé, uh, Hervé Hervey Hervé Villachez. Ugh, just come on, man. You know, it's funny. I think the first line in this movie is Nick knack. Bring me the Tabasco. I think is the first thing that Scaramanga says. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay. Because uh, that stuck out to me on my rewatch uh, like a year ago. I think I said, Did, is that the first thing that the male with the golden gun says? Bring me some Tabasco sauce? Uh, Nick Knack is a great henchman. I love yeah. him uh, in this movie. I do too. So there are a lot of things that, that are done right. Even uh, the title song uh, is great. Oh. I mean, because the title song is, even though it's another gold song, but Lulu and Shirley Bassey, there's yeah. kind of a, a mirroring of style there. It's a similar style. It feels very Bondy. It feels vintage Bondy. And yep. like they did in Goldfinger, they're telling the story of the villain in the song. That's right? a good point. Yeah. In Goldfinger, it's uh, 
oh, he's uh, such a cold Charges. finger, yeah. Yeah. you know, challenge you to enter his web of sin, right? And in this but one, don't go in, but don't da, 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 go da, da, da. in. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh. Gold Finger. Right. He and in this one, sing it. in this one, it's the same thing. He's got a powerful weapon. It cost him a million, million a shot. A shot. <laughs> uh, the man with, with that golden, golden gun. gun. We'll it's very get similar. it done. It's very similar. Um, and yeah, again, not only does Scaramanga have the weird physical quirk, he has the golden gun. Yeah. Where he has these Just bullets. Awesome. Come on now, man. Manufactured. Awesome. They kill you in one shot. Uh, yeah. And you know what? That was always the one, the character you wanted to play. The game, the Bond I liked, the video game I liked was Nightfire. And, um, yeah. which was for GameCube and, and PS2. And uh, if you got the golden gun in that one, it was just one shot kill. One shot, one shot kill. So you need him. So you need him. It was just one shot. So there's a lot, there's a lot right with this movie. There are some weird things. Uh, yeah. There's the, blooper where you can see the entire film crew in the mirror have you did you have you picked up on I that of course that, but i can i can only imagine the, there's a blooper yeah. where you can literally see he goes in front of a mirror i think at the belly dancer place and okay. you see the whole crew in the mirror uh <laughs> i'm gonna see if i can pull it up for you man with the golden gun but so that's kind of a weird thing uh blooper let's see if it can come up I don't know if it's like the one thing. It's probably the only thing that comes up when you do it. But you can see, like you said, the entire crew uh, at one point in the movie. And what was it like? Yeah, like it's funny because the story is this assassin, you know, and, 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 you know, with Bond and this. But then they go into this. What was it? It was the Solatex agitator. Yeah. Like solar weapon. And I'm like, what? Like, well, you need all this. Like in so many of the Bond films, they take the story, the book, and then they combine it with another. They combine it with a short story or or, are they, you know, and sometimes it works, Um, you know, like they have Fabergé egg and Octopussy or or, uh, the cellist assassin in Living Daylights, like how that's just about a messenger. And, and, uh, you know, they they kind of brought in about the whole thing with this with the assassin as a sniper and she's a cellist and whatnot. Uh, But this one is just like. The assassin, you you had so much story with just the assassin on his own, and you could have done so many different things with this assassin that's out there, the Bonzi stuff. But then you bring in the Solix agitator, and you're like, <laughs> well, you're an assassin. Wait, wait, why do you got a secret layer? It didn't make a lot weapon. of sense. Like, um, yeah. Now, here's the other thing, is they actually gave Scaramanga a backstory. You know, yeah, we got to yeah, understand yeah. that he grew up in the carnival or whatever, and he was a trick right. shot artist, and... That explains kind of the really it, it is a cool climax of the movie where they're fighting one another and there's the mirrors and the yeah uh, things where he's trying to find him. But the third nipple. Okay, here's my beef on the third nipple. Or what is it? Yeah, what is it called? Beef? A superfluous uh, mem- mem- yeah, they, 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 memorandum. I can't remember just, what it says. Yeah, they don't just want to say he got a third nipple. <laughs> yeah, they got uh, third nips. A, Three a, nips. A third Three nipple, snips. sir. Uh, this is this was Roger Moore is the most guilty of knowing everything in the world as James Bond. Yeah, he like was. in those scenes with him. Like if you go back and watch him, oh yes, of course, Scaramanga grew up in a circus. His mother and father were trick shot artists. Right. He learned that this and that, da 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 da. He's got a third nipple. Why do you ask? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, that's the guy we're going after. But um, yeah. the third nipple. So there's the point where. Uh, Bond impersonates Scaramanga and they check right. to see if he has a third nipple because that's does. the giveaway, right? Yeah. Is the only reason they gave Scaramanga a third nipple is so that Bond can do this. Uh, <laughs> it's the only reason. Like, yeah. I don't understand any plot device of the third nipple other than, hey, you know, it'd be great. Like if he has a third nipple and Bond like impersonates his third nipple. Right. And what is what what other point could there be? I, I don't I don't know. That's the thing. It's like, ah, eh, all right, you know. <laughs> it was, I think and you know, and now you know, I try and when I watch these and think about the context of the book, I'm trying to think like in the context of the book, you know, at this point it would have been at least 10 years earlier, more so. Um that that's just a exotic weird thing. It was just a weird abnormality this guy had. And when it translates to film, you actually have to see the nipple. And, you know, they have to place the pl- plastic nipple on. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe things do work better in a book than in a film sometimes. 
Yeah. Yeah. The um Maud Adams is one of the Bond girls. She yes. returns later as um as Octopussy or in Octopussy. Octopus. Yes. And um Bond hits her in this movie. Yeah. Roger Moore hits her. Yeah. Now Sean Connery, when he was a little rough with the women. Yep. Not that I'm not saying that it's okay, but I'm saying it made more sense for his bond. You have to also, and I, I try and when I talk to people about Bond, the books, he's a the, the character of Bond is a different man. He's a hard man. He's a you know, and, and he it felt in it, it wasn't out of place for Bond to treat women like that. Mm-hmm. And again, written in the 50s and 60s. But again, you could write that book today. It's just a character of the time. Uh, and that's why I kind of, and I talk about it a little bit with, with Dalton. He had a lot of uh, Fleming's bond in him, in the way he treats women. Mm-hmm. He was very, very gentle with women, especially like Kara Malovi, and he kind of falls in love with her. But there's a couple scenes with, with the other women he treats in that film. It doesn't hit him, but it, it's, it is striking when Moore does it. You're kind of like. It doesn't make sense oh. for him. It, it just, and I think if I remember correctly, reading about this, he didn't like that either. He, he did. hated it. Yeah. He hated it. He did not want to do uh, it. Because it wasn't his bond. And, yeah. you know, for right or wrong, it's a lot of reasons why people don't feel that Moore's bond was Fleming's bond. Um, and, you know, teach their own. Still love him, but wasn't really what the book was. Now, one of the more infamous scenes. Now, again, by the way, J.W. Pepper is back in this movie. <laughs> he, he's on vacation. He's on vacation. What? He did, boy? Did it again? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but it made sense. Think about it. Like, sure, he would be on vacation. What are the odds that it happens in the same guy? Right. But it makes sense. Like, you see him and his wife, like the, you know, good old boy from Louisiana. Of course he's going to go to the th- to Thailand. We've got to get the <laughs> massages and they got the happy endings of course I'm going over there boy <laughs> <laughs> but that does you how popular uh, J.W. Pepper must have been e- either yeah, either this like, the reason why you see characters appear again in a movie especially when they're a small yeah. bit player of one of two reasons either one the audience responded really really well to them or yeah. two as we say in wrestling they pop the boys meaning everyone on the crew was entertained by this guy dude you and know it was like we that? need them back I, I, my, my good, my, my partner in crime, Chance Ellison, we joke about this in Spider-Man Homecoming. There's an extra. He's owns like a, like a newsstand or a hot dog stand. Oh, yeah. He's like, hey, mm-hmm. Spider-Man. You Spider-Man? He's like, yeah. He's like, do a flip. He's like, yeah. <laughs> that guy pops up in Shang-Chi. Does he's he on really? The bu- on the bu- he's on the bus where he's like, oh, I'm from YouTube filming this and that. The same guy. Oh. So I don't know. And I think it's the same character. So I, yeah. I think what you said was popping off. Like, I think they loved him. And like we got to bring him back. Oh, we love this guy. He's, he's in, this he's, guy's the new JW Pepper. He's the JW Pepper of the MCU. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Keep bringing him back. Um, so there's JW Pepper, but one of the more infamous things in the Man with the Golden Gun mm-hmm. is the incredible stunt with the car. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, now man. this was a real stunt yep. done by a real stunt driver. He nails it. In one take, but can you imagine if this, goes, if this goes wrong? Like you, you're in trouble. If this goes wrong, you're screwed. Right? Like, you're, you're probably not going to live. Now, I read somewhere because uh, because there there unfortunately there's a couple times if I remember right that a Bond stunt person either got seriously injured I, or died. Yeah. Um. But there's a code. And you might know this better among stunt people that if you are to die in a stunt, you want that take used. Have you heard this before? I've heard that. Yeah. Like, like they, like I, 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 you know, I love watching behind the scenes and I think, you know, they always say is like, if I'm going to, if that's where I'm going to go, that better be the take that's used right. because then you're immortalized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I understand it. Die, but Tom Cruise and, and fallout where he broke his ankle, that's the take that they used. Oh, they use that uh, take. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. You see it. Oh, you see it on his face. You see his ankle, and you see it on his face, and it's just like, oh, yeah, that's the one they used. Oh, but man. I, I wouldn't doubt that in the least. Uh, but it, it says something about the stunt, and and John Barry, the composer, has talked about this, and and the mistake that he made of putting, taking this great pre Tom Cruise, pre Tom Cruise, like Tom Cruise probably would have driven this car himself. Yeah, but 
they do like a three, like a, it's like a full loop to jump this thing. And it's awesome. And they, they that would have been the perfect time for the Bond theme to kick in, but they add a slide whistle. It's like, and he, and Barry's like, he goes, I, I talk about it in the book and, and I don't know. I don't know what this is like, but he, he, he admits it fully and takes full responsibility for that. It was like, why so mind numbing because not only do they just put the slide whistle in there, they take all the other audio out. Oh, it's dead silence. Yes. It's dead silence. And you just hear the, Ooh, and it's, if I was the stunt person, I would have lost yeah. my mind. Yeah. It's like, that was my moment in a Bond film when I could have had the Bond theme blaring and you give me a slide whistle like I'm Wiley Coyote. <laughs> it was so, such an odd choice. And the, the other funny thing is after this driver nails it in one take, Cubby yeah. Broccoli went up to him and said, hey, do you think that we could do it again? Because he said it was too clean and we don't think audiences will believe that it's real. And I'm like, what do you want this guy to do? Do you want him to, like, yeah. to die? <laughs> insane but the slide whistle is infamous it's an infamous yeah. moment but in some regards i think that it kind of it fits kind more. of fits more yeah you're it's, not wrong I it's mean, like this is what he is we're gonna yeah. have a snake charmer playing the bond theme you know i mean like yeah you're right i mean you're gonna be driving you know uh, um a uh, a gondola <laughs> through the streets of venice you know and, and waving to people as you do it you know yeah, you and a pigeon's gonna double take. You know, <laughs> thinking about his films, there's no Bond that films run the gamut like his. There's just none. You've got Free Eyes Only, which is like almost a cold. He's a cold blooded, blooded killer in quite a bit mm -hmm. of that film. Versus some of the other things, you know, the, yeah, the slide, the, the, the snake charmer with the Dumbo Seven theme, like, and then you know, watching these growing up, you don't think twice. Like, think about okay. What if you let, let's say you're the more films and you're a 45 year old man watching these as opposed to us as like, a, like I was I don't know, 10 when I saw that film and I didn't, didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, Bond theme. Are they rolling their eyes or are they kind of like in on the joke? You never know. I, I mean, I can't say for sure. You don't certainly. know. You don't know. And, and I just yeah. wonder because there were campy elements of Diamonds Are Forever. Yeah. Right? It, was, it was getting yeah. to that camp. Yeah, they were. They were approaching the camp. Live and Let Die, though, didn't – I mean, it had some no, – that's what I'm saying. It's like yes, the story is, really? is kind of dark. It's a good – like this. these two assassins versus each other. I think that's such a great story. Yeah. And then you got thrown in the soul, soul Tex agitator. And, 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 and a slide whistle. And knick-knack. Now, uh, Christopher Lee was Ian Fleming's cousin, I believe. Oh. Um, they, they, were, they were cousins, uh, distant cousins, but cousins nonetheless – and uh, Christopher Lee was really popular at the time because he just did the uh, Dracula movie. And, yeah. you know, he was kind of the villain of the day. So I think this was a good get, good casting. I like Maude Adams. I like, um, oh, yeah. Uh, what's her name? Britt Eklund uh, yep. in this movie. Um, there, there, there were good parts, but I'll just, say this. It just it ranks low this, for yeah. a lot of people. This movie ranks low yeah. for a lot of people. I'll say this, and let me tell you something. In the chapters on Bond, between this film and. Moonraker, Holly Goodhead, <laughs> yes, and Molly Goodnight, yeah, or Holly Goodnight and Molly Goodhead, like the two of them. And I, I had to go through that chapter with a fine tooth comb because I was like, I'm no, I'm gonna put Holly Goodhead or Molly Goodhead, Holly Goodnight, Molly Goodnight. Like, no, I, I those two of all the Bond women, forever for this day. I apologize if you're reading this. I apologize if we talk about this in the book. Uh, and I talk about it to you, I will forever get them wrong. Yes. Forever. Forever. I don't know why they don't look alike. They're completely different characters. One's a CIA agent. The other's just kind of, you know, a blonde in a little bikini running around. Yeah. But the names forever will, I will forever get confused on. Holly and Molly, good head and good night. Yeah. Um, there you go. You can't really do much about it. The man with the golden gun. So let's, let's look at some of the behind the scenes here. Okay. Um, in his autobiography, Roger Moore said that they were filming the boat chase on the Klongs and he fell in twice. The first was on purpose because they told him not to do it. And the second time was by accident. On the second fall, Moore made the mistake of opening his eyes underwater and saw what the local undertakers did with the bodies of the less fortunate. 
Conversely, this is the only Sir Roger Moore Bond movie where the Bond character is not drenched in water in some way. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Weird trivia, but that they find the only Weird. Bond film where he's never in water. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, here's another one. While on location in Thailand, Sir Roger Moore found a cave full of bats. He couldn't resist out seeking Christopher Lee. Uh, seeking, he couldn't resist seeking out Christopher Lee, telling him what he had found and joking, Master, they are all yours at your command. Uh, and Lee appreciated the joke of Glenn going to the Dracula thing that we discussed. This was one of the lowest grossing Bond movies of all time. And I can't understand really why. Because uh, that's, uh, yeah, it, I, I, that surprises me. Yeah. One of the, and, and, and it actually, was so financially uh, 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 bad for Ian Productions to what actually delayed Spy Who Loved Me from coming out the, the three year gap. Year. That's the mm-hmm. biggest biggest gap to since that time. they started. Yeah, yeah, to that time. And then again, the uh, the <laughs> slide whistle is referred to as one of the most infamous moments in stunt yeah. dr- stunt car history because <laughs> of. What happened? And yeah. the reason they said they added it uh, again was they didn't want audiences to take the ton- stunt too seriously and be too off put by what? it. Yeah. Okay. So a guy All Hamilton right. said in an interview, okay, um, he said he did regret that as, as so did uh, Mr. Barry. But there you are. That is that we is don't a want them to think on. We don't want it to be too serious. Like that's like putting a slide whistle with Eth- with Ethan Hunt when he's swinging across the Burj Khalifa. He's like. <laughs> Like, uh, oh well, different audience is different time. What can you do? Yeah, yeah. Um, is the time is it my favorite time? It's your favorite time. It's All your right, favorite buddy. time. This is the man with the golden gun. Okay, we okay. know, we know that so this is one that people least successful, least successful. This is one okay. people typically put toward the bottom of their list. Now, here's the one interesting thing about the man with the golden gun. Okay. Is well, actually, I'll, let me not reveal that because it might it might interfere with your prediction. So go yeah, for I it. I don't want to be swayed. I don't want to be. Swayed. What is your prediction? Last man, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the Living Let Die was sixty five. Yes. God, I, I, I want to go against my gut on this one, and I'm going to say least financially successful doesn't mean its critic score was bad. Seventy-two percent. Okay. Now, Mike. Yes. You're sir. a good guy. You're you're a friend of mine, and I respect yeah. your work. Yeah. However, you are infinitely off on this one. Oh. This God, is your no. biggest gap so far. Was it? Yes. The Man with the Golden Gun, nineteen hundred seventy-four, yes. got yes, a thirty-nine percent. What? The first rotten James Bond movie on the tomato meter. And it's a middling Bond film. The Man with the Golden Gun suffers from double entendre-laden dialogue, a noteworthy lack of gadgets, and a villain that overshadows 007. Uh, now, this, this Brad, throws off my entire thing from now on. Because I don't think, in my head, I don't think Bond ever was not fresh. Mm-hmm. So, oh, God. I was always trying to keep it. What, what is fresh? Seventy or fresh is sixty. Six. Oh yeah, I was keeping everything. I was going to say every film above sixty. So this is this now throws I'm in you trouble. off. This now throws I'm in you trouble. off. Now this... I'm in trouble, buddy. Oh <laughs> well, God. Well, as... I was always I was always close. I was always in the ballpark. You were very in the ballpark. Now I'm screwed. You nailed it one time. Now you're. I don't know where we're going to go for you for this. I'm worried for I you. I don't know. I'm in trouble. You're in big you trouble. Much. But we're going to come back on this show. And we're going to talk about one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Spy Who Loved Me. Yes, sir. Is great for many reasons. And we're going to talk about that on the next episode of the show. Mike, yes, sir. Where can the people find you? They can find me at, wait for it, Mike Kalinowski. Oh. Simple to the point, my name. How many times, like, when you have to talk to, like, an operator over the phone or yes, give sir. somebody your address... When you say Kalinowski, do you do you say it 
and then spell it, or do you just go straight for the spelling? No, usually. Oh, sorry about that. Usually, people will they pronounce it right because if you look at it, it it's it's it says, it's, it's phonetic. It's phonetic, it's but do people phonetic, spell yeah. it correctly all the time? Yeah, they, they do. They do. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm but then what they'll do is like, oh, Mike Wazowski. I'm like, yep, haven't heard that before. <laughs> Every single time. All right. Well, we'll be talking to Mike Wazowski uh, here about the Spy Who Loved Me as I, we continue on our series, Bond James Bond, the companion podcast for the book. Bond James Bond exploring the shaken and stirred history of Ian Fleming's 007 available on bondjamesbondbook.com or wherever books are sold. Mike, until sure. next time. Until next time. James Bond will return from the spy who loved Oh, Brian, what have you done now? Oh, Brian, what have you done now? Oh, Brian, what have you done now?